other than April O'Neil from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 1, the live action film. This is also done by NECA. This was also one of the uh, unfortunate culprits of the footage that I unboxed. I uh, I went into detail and I'm going to go over uh, again what I mentioned in the other video that you guys didn't get to see because it is gone. But uh, also from NECA, this is uh, the attire that she wore when she was attacked by the Foot Clan. So let's get started with the video, folks. All right, so this Who's Lucy is going to start off with none other than the man, the myth, the legend. The Super Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Secret of the Ooze, part two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles saga. And uh, this is actually the Shadow Master Super Shredder. So I'm going to be going over in depth on that. What's the difference? This is made by NECA. I've been sitting on this figure for many, many, many months and I, actually a couple years rather. Uh, for whatever reason, just never got around to doing it. Um, but I'll go into detail as to what my reasoning was, why I waited until recently to unbox these. Um, I actually did an unboxing video, as uh, I may mention on one of the other videos that may or may not come before this. So just, you know, bear with me. But uh, I did about four unboxings, this one included, and my computer lost all the data. So I already unboxed everything, all the, all the extra stuff was gone or basically just put away, and so I couldn't unbox them again. So uh, now we're just basically doing it on a Who's Lucy because these are loose figures, catch my drip. And the next figure also that we're gonna be doing on Who's Lucy is. We've been waiting for you, Miss O'Neill. What? Am I behind on my Sony payments again? <laughs> Hey, you can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You were canceled. All right. So we're going to start off on this uh, Who's Lucy NECA edition of the April O'Neil from NECA, part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie part one. This is the attire that she wore when she was done with the uh, interview of Chief Stearns. And she goes into the, the train station and the Foot Clan um, attack her. And this is uh, the... <laughs> It's cool, cool that the, they included the bag that she uses to be able to rough them up. <laughs> or protect herself, rather. Um, I really liked this April O'Neil, even though she wasn't in the second and third film. Uh, and I'll go into detail as to why she wasn't in just a moment. But she was a little feisty, you know, like in the cartoon, April was kind of like the damsel in distress. And she always got into trouble. And she always got captured and stuff like that. This this one even though she does get into some trouble she is not about to just allow people to just ru run all over her and she'll throw down if she has to um but this is uh, the NECA like I said April O'Neil she does come with an extra head which I actually don't have I actually put it away but um I was talking about when I originally uh, unbox this because the, the footage was lost if you probably heard with the last few videos I did like five videos um, in a row and had all this footage and I put in my uh, computer and I lost all the footage because it crashed but I did talk about how like her left eye her left my right uh, is a little off and I think it was part due to the paint application not specifically the sculpt because generally the sculpt doesn't have the actual eyes. Very, very few head sculpts actually sculpt the eyes, like the the, the, the iris of the eyes itself. Not the eyeball, but the iris. Um, I hope I said that correctly. But uh, on the other head sculpt, it's fine. I mean, for me, it's just a tad bit off. And um, the other thing that I thought was kind of like interesting is the fact that the head sculpt it's not smiling really. It's the same, pretty much the same thing. It's just an extra head, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, she doesn't come with pretty much anything else other than the sigh. She comes with the sigh that she uh, took from Raphael and that he ultimately gets back when she gets in trouble in the, the subway station. Her articulation is with any kind of like female that has heels. I hate, hate, hate the figures with heels because they're so hard to stand up even on a stand this stand comes up or comes with the figure 
and it's like pulling teeth to try to get her to freaking stand up straight. Um, that's the one thing I kind of dislike. I, I shouldn't say hate, but I dislike immensely. There, there we go. I think that's a better way to say it. Hate is a strong word. But generally speaking, any female or any uh, figure that matter that has heels, it's very, very hard to stand up. Uh, for those of you that actually have figures like this, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can attest to that, how difficult it is for them to be stand up, especially with stands, because if they don't, you don't have a lot of space to put it on, it's probably going to be right on the front part of the foot, which is where she's standing right there, you know, they don't actually have a hole on the heel, but, you know, I, I digress, I'm going getting a little bit too meta on this. Her articulation is the same with any um, NECA figure on the wrist, on the elbow, shoulder. There's no bicep. There's no bicep uh, articulation. She does have uh, articulation at the knees and at the ankle. But yeah, so this is pretty cool. I, I actually had this figure uh, a while ago. I completely forgot about it. I, I bought it, or actually, no, I should say my wife bought it for me. It was like, it was on sale. And like Kyle Peterson says, you gotta get a deal. And so I put it in a bag and then kind of like tossed it somewhere thinking that I'll remember to, to come get it later to do a reveal or unboxing. And then it just, I totally forgot about it for months. And then I was cleaning up my room and then I'm like, what is this bag? And then I looked and it was in there and I almost came pretty close to buying another one and for, something told me not to get it, you know? So I was like, I'll, I'll, I won't get it. And it's a good thing I did, or I didn't actually, because then I would have two. But yeah, I mean, I, I like this uh, April O'Neil. Um, I know I want to get the two pack with Casey Jones and her, uh, and basically the attires when they're at the home or at the ranch. So you can see it right here. This is the two pack with her and Casey Jones. Other than that, she has no other NECA figures. I don't know if they're going to make uh, April O'Neil with the different actric, act, blah, blah, take a shot, actress, um, because she, this particular Judith Hogue, who, which is her real name, she did not approve or didn't really like the violence that the first movie had. Now, from today's standards, okay, that violence is pretty tame but back in the 90s you know that was kind of hardcore and teenage mutant ninja turtles was an uh, independent film by new line cinema and um golden harvest it was a dual uh, production co-production and so they actually had a lot of stuntmen from uh hong kong come to do the uh stunts for the turtles in the movie uh, Ernie Reyes Jr., who then plays Kino in part two, actually played one of the turtles in the suits. Like, he was actually one of the stuntmen, which is, you know, kind of meta if you think about it. But that was the reason why she didn't come back. It's kind of like, depends on who you ask. Did she not want to come back? They offered it to her and she said no for part two. Or they were like, all right, well, I'm, we're just going to recast you because you're not, you know. You're, you're not the turtle, so that's the one thing that we need to make sure that we cast right for the turtles. And then they just got the other person, I forget her name, um, but for April O'Neil part two and part three, it was played by the same actress, but not Judith Hope. So kind of del delving into the uh, world of the insider information on the film, I'm sure with any documentary that and any appearance that Judith does, because she goes to a lot of cons, by the way, and she talks about it at ad nauseum about how you know she didn't like the the violence but yet everybody seems to like not take that as a slight you know because a lot of times you know fans are very hardcore if you say something bad to stuff that it's a part of their childhood they'll just like excommunicate you like right quick but she seems to be very uh accepted at a lot of cons she does a lot of appearances and stuff like that so that's actually pretty cool so let's go to the next figure Cowabunga! Yeah! yeah. Cowabunga! Oh. He must have drank all of it! It's a super shredder! 
All right, so the last figure that we're gonna go over today in this Who's Lucy brought to you by J&J Toy Giants is none other than the Super Shredder. Now this is actually a different Super Shredder and I'll, I'll explain in just a moment. Um, and again, this is a, basically a, a re-taping uh, of the unboxing. I did an unboxing with him as I did with April, but <clears throat> I lost the footage. Uh, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say that. <laughs> I just want to make sure that people understand that I did a lot of work on that one day and then poof, all that stuff was gone. Um, but I think this was the last one that I recorded that I lost the footage on. So I don't think you're going to hear me talk about it anymore. Um, so basically it depend, also depends on when these uh, videos come out. So. I might put some other ones that I recorded before this on, you know, after this. So that depends on um, when um, I put this out. But with that being said, as I said, this is a second version of Super Shredder. And this is what they call the Shadow Master Super Shredder because this one, the first one <clears throat> actually has a little bit more purple and the purple pops more on his his attire um and of course for those of you who don't know where the super shredder came from this was part of the teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 secret of the ooze uh super shredder spoiler alert <clears throat> he gets tossed out of a club um through up oh, i got it this time he didn't fall um he was tossed out of a club because they there was a speaker that blew out on him right and it basically just shot him across the, the room of the uh, club that Vanilla Ice was uh, rapping on. And he had a vial of the ooze that they stole, that the foot plant stole from TGRI. Man, this guy just won't stay standing. There we go. So <clears throat> basically he had a bunch of ooze that I guess either he drank it or they spilled on him, which is uh, kind of like now as a an adult i was kind of wondering like okay well i can understand his muscle structure and the way he looks you know got mutated but how does like steel and 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 knives like this mutate you know what i mean it's it was just something that he was wearing it wasn't part of his dna or anything like that that i digress <clears throat> when you're a kid you know 10 11 years old 12 13 you don't really think about that stuff um so <clears throat> I don't have the original one that came out. I'm looking to get that one too. One of the things that um, maybe many people may not know about uh, the Super Shredder was that he was actually played by Kevin Nash. Uh, so Kevin Nash was a former WWE, WCW uh, professional wrestler. And he was a WWE champion, WCW champion. Uh, and he actually played the Super Shredder. He was the one that was wearing the suit when they were filming. and. Real quick, too, just in case of not too many people know about this, and he actually said this on his podcast. He made more money filming this film, filming that movie. I mean, it was only in a small part. He made more money doing that than he did on the whole year of him wrestling. And he was the champion at that time. So that kind of begs the question of how much money that the wrestlers were getting paid back in the day. I mean, they make fairly good money now. But, um, you know, it, it's kind of like boggles my mind that he made more money for like a few days shooting than he did a whole year of wrestling. And he and back then, you know, the the way that they used to do it back in the day, like you would get like a lot of money, but you were working 300 days wrestling 300 days a year for that big money. And that's just the way that uh, Vince McMahon ran his business back in the day. Now, guys will work maybe 200 days. 150 days um, and but they're still making good money but uh, yeah so one of the things I was kind of like weirded out by is that you could see his eyes now in the movie you don't see his eyes it's very very dark in that in that scene if you go back and watch it that scene is very dark because it takes place at night outside at the pier so the fact that you could actually see his eyes is kind of weirded out it weirds me out a little bit it looks like he's uh, looking at me uh, but his articulation and he's very heavy by the way i just want to let you know 
He's very heavy. Uh, his articulation does go at the uh, the elbows, the wrist, the oops, sorry, uh, no bicep. His head, his head does turn. Elbow, wrist, knees, and but he's this guy's been in the box for a very long time. This was another one that I had um, for a very very long time, and I just didn't unbox him. Because uh, I wanted to get the Shredder and Splinter 2-pack first, which I did unbox uh, a couple years ago. But, yeah, so definitely this one was a long time coming. Um, I do want to get the original one so I can have them side by side and kind of do the comparison. But, yeah, I mean, this pretty much... Oh, also to the, uh, the, the texture of the cape. It's kind of like a pleather, like plastic leather on the outside, but then cloth on the inside. And that's actually kind of cool. But um, it's not really much I can say about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, he, Like I said, he does weigh a lot. His, um, I don't really think he needs a stand.